Hey gardeners, my name is Bobby, and you are watching Gardening on Taylor Mountain. First of all, I wanted to say a big welcome and thank you to all of the new subscribers here. I'm looking forward to getting to know you through your comments and you can get to know a little bit more about me through the videos. So I'm really excited to uh, just to make some new friends. Thank you also to all of you that have been with me for a while. I just so appreciate your support of this channel. I wanted to just jump right in here and talk with you a few minutes about something that has been plaguing my rose bushes, perhaps plaguing your rose bushes. And I don't want to take up too much of your time, but this is going to be a vlog style video. I'm going to be doing a lot more talking than I like to do on a video, but sometimes you just have to talk things out. If you are noticing holes in the leaves of your rose bushes, that is the work of the rose sawfly larva. And there are little green worms also known as the uh, rose slug. So I'm going to take you out to a more, much more sunny area in my garden. I have uh, only two rose bushes at the current time and both of them are grown in containers. but the one out in my garden has had a little bit more action with the rose slug so uh, we'll head out there and take a look at that here's a perfect example of the sawfly larva and that is so hard for me to say anyway i'm going to call it a rose slug that's much easier and let me show you, look at the bud damage it did, if I can focus in here, right there. They'll even do some damage on your buds. The sawfly will lay its eggs in springtime on the undersides of the leaves of your rose bushes, and then they turn into the sawfly larva, which is the green worm that you see, the rose slug. And when you, you know, when you're seeing evidence of all of the holes in the leaves of your rose bushes, you're, you know that you've got rose slugs. In my opinion, the best defense for pest control in your garden is you yourself, your eyes and your hands. And what I mean by that is when I, I come out in the morning and I inspect my rose bushes, I inspect pretty much my entire gardens, all of my gardens and I just see what's going on. I put my eyeballs on it. And if I see that I have rose slug damage, then I have my gloves and I just pick them off and squish them. I know that that sounds really gross, but I think really that is your best defense. I think by inspecting your garden, your rose bushes every morning, or when as much as you can, then you're gonna really have a jump start on these bad bugs. Another good defense to have in your garden is to have the presence of the ladybug larva and the mature ladybugs and the praying mantis. They all eat the rose slug. And so they are good little soldiers in your garden. You and them working together, that will just be a natural pest control in your garden. I know that may sound like a lot of work on our part, but we all know that if we have rose bushes, they do require some work on our part. So if you just basically go out and inspect your rose bush, if you see the rose slug, just squish it and you can really keep on top of it. The good news is the lifespan of the rose slug is short and the time frame that the sawfly lays their eggs for the larva is only usually in the spring. So that's the good news. The bad news is if we don't get on top of it pretty early, then it can do quite a bit of destruction to our rose bushes. Let's talk a minute about spraying pesticides. I was the girl who used synthetic sprays years ago in my garden. I was the girl who used synthetic uh, weed killer on our driveway area and things like that. But you know, I began to learn about these products and I began to learn what, how harmful they were to my body and to the environment and to my soil and things like that. So when we start getting knowledge of something and when we start learning about there's a better way, then we need to do something with that knowledge. So I started realizing, oh, I need to do something with this knowledge that I'm learning. So I switched over to all organic sprays. And let me say that if you are using an organic spray, you are still, and I am still, using a spray. We're still spraying a pesticide, which can kill even our beneficial bugs. 
So that's my whole point of this. If you can keep on top of it with your own tools, your hands, your eyes, and then you're attracting those ladybug larvae because if you're not using sprays, whether they be organic or synthetic, you're going to more and more attract the beneficial bugs that are eating these bad bugs. I know that there are some gardeners that don't spray anything whatsoever in their in their garden in any way and I'm getting there I want to say that more and more I am spraying less and less so I'm getting to the point where I'm just realizing uh, I just want to attract every beneficial thing that I can and you know keep the pest control going that way but if I have to resort to a spray if something gets out of control for me then my favorite is probably the Captain Jack's uh, Dead Bug Brew. The main active ingredient in this is spinosad. And uh, supposedly spinosad will not harm your bees and your butterflies, your bats, and your, your pollinators and things like that. Let me say though, when you're spraying, and if you have to spray, only ever spray in the late evening after the bees and the beneficial pollinators have done their work and they're resting for the day because you just don't want to disturb that ecosystem in your garden in any way. And when I spray, I never spray on a bloom or inside of a bloom because that's where your pollinators are going to go in and gather the pollen. So you don't want to spray any blooms. But as I said a few moments ago, more and more I'm learning to spray less and less. My garden is completely a cut flower garden. So when I give a bouquet to someone, I don't want the thought in my mind like I have sprayed a bunch of pesticides and I'm passing this on to a person. I'm just very conscious of that. So as I have grown in knowledge about what goes on in my garden, I'm learning, uh, I'm learning less and less is better, less is more. Another organic spray that I have used, but I don't use it very often anymore, is BT, which is Bacillus thuringii. It is a naturally occurring bacteria found in the soil, and it's OMRI listed, so it is uh, organic. Again, if I were to ever use this, and you would use this if you see the presence of like budworms on your supertunias or your petunias or something like that, uh, then you could spray, you know, around, spray in the leaf area and everything. Only ever in the late evening after any pollinators have gone uh, for the day. Another spray that I have used, which is all organic, is 100% cold pressed neem oil. And these are all the, that I have shown you are concentrates. And you mix this with Castile soap and obviously oil and water don't mix because this is an oil and then water. Um, and again, spray in the late evening. All three of these products would work on the rose slug, but you're just really not going to need it if you're gonna get on top of that and squish them. You know, I think for those of us who live in the areas where we deal with pests like this, not everybody does, but where we deal with these, where we deal with aphids, where we deal with the Japanese beetles on our rose bushes, we realize we're really not going to have super pristine rose bushes, but we can get pretty close if we do our due diligence. And, you know, those together with the little soldiers, the good soldiers we talked about, the, the ladybugs and the praying mantis, I think you can get pretty close to some pretty nice rose bushes. This one's getting ready to, got a lot of buds on it, and only a couple of buds have been eaten by the rose slug and uh, because I've been just really trying to stay on top of it. So this is the coral knockout rose and I'm excited to see it. It's just full of buds. I'm not sure if I said earlier I only have two rose bushes at the current time just because of space and I'm needing the space for other cut flowers. But I do only grow my rose bushes in containers and I will link below the video that I uh, did talking about growing rose bushes in containers. 
I hope this video has been helpful to you and this information. I don't want to bring any condemnation on anyone. If you are using synthetic sprays, I would encourage you to look into that and to, um, you know, just to learn about what they do and, and versus an organic spray. And also I would encourage you to look into taking care of it yourself, taking care of these problems with your own hands. And I think you will be very happy because then you will be attracting all of those beautiful, beneficial uh, insects to your garden and they will begin to do the work. That's what I'm looking forward to is a completely uh, beneficial insect working here and me working here and no spraying. So that's, that's my goal. That's what I'm uh, working toward. I really appreciate you being here with me. And until next time, happy gardening. Bye-bye, friends.